Hello again. I'm going to talk to you about mantras. What is a mantra and how does it help you in life? According to the ancient scriptures of India, the Vedantas, uh, who we call my Lord is an energy field. It's a field of consciousness. In other words, our world is embraced by an energy field of consciousness. And this energy field moves in our human lives in three basic forms. In other words, my Lord moves energetically in three forms. One is light. So you've seen uh, religious paintings, you've seen photographs of saints with halos around them. Uh, light is one way that the God force shows itself. Okay? The second way is vibrations. In Sanskrit terminology, this is called matrika. Matrika means vibrations. Uh, and a sister to matrika is spanda. Spanda means pulsations of consciousness in space. According to the Vedas, the God force is just doing this in all of space. Oh, oh, oh. In other words, the world has a heartbeat, and this heartbeat is full of infinite intelligence. So we have light, we have vibration and pulsing, and then we have sound. There's a whole branch of yoga called Nada Yoga and Mantra Yoga. The theory being that sound affects plants, animals, and human beings. That's the practical theory. In other words, if we can crush a kidney stone with sound, then that proves that sound can penetrate your body. Mantra yoga is the science of penetrating your body, cleansing your body through sound. A mantra, the direct translation of the word mantra, mantra means a tool for your mind. In other words, it's a tool to cleanse and calm your mind. Uh, a mantra has several different dimensions to it. Number one, there's the audible sound of OM. So what does the audible sound do for you? If you're having a very anxious state, and you just want to relieve your anxiety, and you're driving, you just say, Om. In the Farsi language, we have Nur, which means light. Or Ya, Hu. These are Farsi. Uh, in the Vedas, in Sanskrit, we have Om. Om Namah Shivai. Om Hari Hari Om. Every language has its own mantras. The Christians have their own mantras. So, at the grossest level, a mantra is something that just occupies your mind, so you're not worried about your mortgage or your girlfriend. That's at the grossest level. One level more subtle than that, a mantra has a vibration. So listen to this. So a mantra has a vibration. The vibration of a mantra is called matrika. It simply means the vibes. And I will guarantee you, this is a guarantee, if you do two to five minutes of oming before you start to meditate, your entire body will be vibrating. And these vibrations will take you deep into meditation. So matrika is the second dimension of a mantra, it's the vibrations. The third dimension of a mantra is called bija. These are Sanskrit words. Bija means the invisible seed of a mantra. If I were to say, um, after I stop oming, I would hear a silent echo 
after the oming has ended. The silent seed of a mantra is called bija. And the silent seed of a mantra um, carries knowledge and consciousness being wisdom. And in the science of mantra yoga, there are different god heads. This is kind of like mythology, a little bit different. In India, they take the one god force and divide the responsibilities of God into many responsibilities. For example, God should lend you courage, or God can give you physical beauty, or God can give you musical talents. If you think of one God force, then she's got a lot of responsibilities. There's creativity, beauty, courage, talent. So what they did in the Vedantas, in the Indian scriptures, the spiritual scriptures, they divided God's responsibilities into different dimensions. And then they gave each of those parts of God a different name. And these are called Godheads. For example, Sarasvati is a branch of the God force in charge of beauty, music, creativity, culture. Whereas Rama, Rama is a branch of the God force in charge of justice, courage, standing straight, being self-reliant. So it's not that the Vedas talk about 600 different gods. They say God has a lot of, plenty of responsibility. You know, it needs to make the teenager beauty, beautiful. It needs to make the soldier courageous. It needs, needs to give the scientist creativity. So then they give different names to different facilities or qualities of God. And then each quality of God has its own mantra. Because when you chant that mantra, you start to adopt that quality of God. So let's say you're a musician wanting to play at Carnegie Hall and you're feeling dry in terms of creativity. So then you go to Saraswati, who is the goddess of art and uh, creativity. And you start chanting Saraswati's uh, mantra, which is Aing, Aing, Aing. And when you do this, you're making use of several layers of Ayin. One is, if you believe that Saraswati is the goddess of arts, then the meaning of Ayin gets you closer to the goddess, the muse of the arts. That's just meaning-wise. Then there's the vibration, Ayin. The vibration penetrates your cells molecules and energy centers so you start to vibrate like a violin almost you start to vibrate with music okay so that's the vibration and then there's the bija bija is the unheard part after you stop chanting so if you say om five times and then plug your ears you're going to hear a sound after you stop oming that's the bija. That's the unheard seed. The unheard seed of a mantra helps you manifest things. It's at the level of quantum physics. It helps you co-create with the God Force. In India, there are books this thick, full of mantras. There are mantras for healing your kidney. There are mantras for sexual vigor. There are mantras for learning foreign languages. And it's all based on knowledge, vibrations, and the meaning of that mantra. Uh, in general, in India, there are feminine mantras and masculine mantras. In other words, certain sounds have more testosterone to them. 
you know, certain sounds. Like if you hit a bass drum, you know, a bass drum, boom, that seems to have a masculine sound to it. But uh, if you ring a bell, it seems to have more of a feminine sound to it. This has nothing to do with strength or weakness. In the world of mantras, a mantra like shring is given to women. Shring. Whereas a mantra like uh, Rama, Rama, Rama or Hrim is masculine. Hrim for the boys, Shring for the girls. But uh, you need to understand one thing. Within the science of yoga, feminine doesn't mean weak. For example, the God force is called Shiva. Shiva is feminine. It's not a masculine force. So in yoga, feminine is a very powerful force. It has nothing to do with men and women, in a sense. It's more metaphysical than just men and women. It's the feminine power of nature and the masculine power of nature. I encourage you to use mantras on many different levels. If you're driving and you're worried about the recession, you just say Om, 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 or Noor, 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 or Yahoo. And what you're doing is you're occupying your mind with a sound that means something to you. So at the grossest level, the moment Om comes in, you're not thinking about your mortgage. That's at the grossest level. And then there's the meaning of it. For example, Om is the sound of the God Force vibrating in a thousand galaxies. Om. According to the ancient yogis, this is the sound vibrating in all of space because of the movement of the God Force. That's what Om means. Om Namah Shivai means I pay my respects to Shiva, the God Force. Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om means I pay my respects to the science of Kriya Yoga, the breathing meditation that Kambi's Nafisi teaches. So uh, Kriya Babaji was the founder of Kriya Yoga, which is a type of breathing meditation. So Om Kriya Babaji Nama Om has a meaning. So now we have the audible sound, we have the meaning of the sound, like, oh, this is the voice of God, oh, there's a meaning. And then there's bija. In other words, after we stop chanting, if you plug your ears, you might continue hearing the om. At that level, if you keep the silent sound of the mantra inside you, then the Vedas say you can actually manifest you can co-partner with God to manifest what it is that you need. So if you need the arts, Aing, because you're appealing to Sarasvati. If you need courage and protection, you speak to Ram. Rama, 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 Rama. That gives you courage and protection. Om Namah Shivaya gets rid of baggage in your subconscious mind and it brings you mindfulness. So we say, when you're silently chanting Om Namah Shivaya, you are nourishing mindfulness, being in the present moment, and getting rid of baggage in your subconscious mind. Uh, the Lord Ganesh. Ganesh is another part of the God Force. So you say, Gan. Gun, gun. And this mantra, gun, brings protection and success. I wish you all those things. Remember these mantras. Use them in your life.